Let you know that it's a blessing to be found in the house of the Lord. Oh, yeah. I see how many people have been blessed and blessed to be found in the house of the Lord. Amen. Again, as my pastor said, man, I want to thank all of you all, Pastor Brother Tony, and everyone that attended. We had such a glorious anointed field back on Friday night. Yeah, all you gotta do is show up and the anointing of God will show up. Not very long, church, from the book of Colossians. The book of Colossians, chapter 2. And we'll look at verses 6 through 12. We won't know you for a long time, but from the book of Colossians. Chapter 2, verses 6 to 12. Amen? Uh -huh. Verses 6 to 12. And it reads as follows. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving and Paul says beware lest any man spur you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The church you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also you have circumcised with the circumcision made without hand in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Last but not least, certain church buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who had raised him from the dead. Amen. 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 We want to talk about this morning. Jesus, there's no other gospel except Christ. Jesus, he is everything we need. Jesus, he's everything, church, that we need. In other words, he is preeminent. He should be first and he should be foremost in everything. And as Christians, our life should reflect that priority. That Christ should be first and foremost in our life. What I'm saying is you can't have a life without Jesus Christ. He's first and foremost. And our life, somebody need to hear me, our life should reflect that priority that Jesus is first and he's foremost in my life. What you say, Pastor, the Bible says that he is the author and the finisher of my faith. It begins with him and it should very well end with him. If you get faint and weary and you, you feel like you want to give up sometime, you need to consider Jesus Christ. Amen. Because as believers, we ought to first be rooted in him. Why? Because we were once dead, but we were made alive in Him. Yes. That life that we had was hidden in Him, and it is also 
complete in him. It is utterly inconsistent for us to live this life without him. There's no way you can do it. You cannot do it on your own, but you can be strengthened through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. We should be clothed in his love with his peace ruling in our hearts. We are equipped to make Christ first in every area of our life. How are we equipped? We are equipped through the word of God. Yes. So that if faith cometh by hearing, then hearing by the word of That's God. Right. We are equipped in Christ through the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone. He ain't saying it from a few words, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And as we look at this text, church, Paul is not just saying to us, but he's also saying to the church to see to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy or empty deceit or false teaching according to human tradition and that not be according to the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Just as you know sometimes today I don't get into biblical debate, debates or listen to the foolishness of men because I keep my mind stayed on Jesus Christ and I keep my head and my face in the word of God. You can't show it to me in the word, miss me with all of the foolishness. And the Bible tells us that Jesus is everything we need. That we should, if we want to change, then we should depend on the transforming power of Christ. I remember talking to my pastor, and oftentimes I say this to folk, and I have to say this this morning. I remember telling him, I said, Pastor, I'm so glad that I came in when I did it. He said, no, son, stop right there. You didn't come in. God saved you through Jesus Christ. So don't go out there telling nobody that foolish is about you. you came in because God does the same. <laughs> and in this book of Colossians, Paul primarily emphasizes the supremacy of of Christ over all creation. Amen? Amen. Church, the treasures of wisdom are hid not from us, but for us in Christ. In this text, Paul encourages the church that belief in Jesus was enough. That Jesus said believe was free from man-made rules and regulations. Paul reminds them that that's who they used to be. He's reminding us today that that's who we used to be before we let Jesus take control of our lives. He emphasizes the importance of a life with Jesus Christ. Paul's correction here, church, is about the church knowing and experiencing the fullness of life with Christ. Paul wants us to see that Christ is the image and the full expression of God. Yes. You see Christ, you see the Father. He is the full expression of God. And that true Christian growth, church, comes from remaining firmly connected. To Christ, mm -hmm. that we should always hold on to His unchanging hand. Yes. Why? Because He's the same yes. today, tomorrow, and forevermore. And forevermore. Oh, yes. Yes. He's not like a man that He would change, huh. and He's not a man that He should lie. Amen. And Paul said, and He says, He is the supremacy of Christ is over all creation. That believers are complete in him. And that we should focus on our new life in him. Mm -hmm. 
and to call to live a life set on the heavenly things yeah. by putting out our, our form of worldly yeah. practices mm -hmm. and develop Christ-like life. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when, when folks see us, they should see him. Amen. They should no longer see me, but they should see he that lives in me because greater is he who lives in me. That's right. That he yeah. that's in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you're going to have two experiences when it comes to this Christian law. Mm -hmm. The first one you're going to have, you're going to have your wilderness experience. I don't know, maybe you haven't had your. You're, you're going to have that experience when you wander around, when you like some prayer, I had my when you wander around and you keep running into yourself till you hit a brick wall, you're going to have your wilderness experience <coughs> and then secondly, one day, you're going to have your Damascus Road experience when you, when you meet Jesus Christ and he'll meet you right where you are. And just like Paul, he'll change your name. He'll, he'll change your name from Liar, he'll change your name from backbiter. Lord, I am good for nothing. He'll change your name because Jesus Christ, there's no other gospel but Jesus Christ. And he is everything that you need. Mm -hmm. And as believers, we are considered to be dead to sin and alive to God through our union with Christ. Yes. Meaning that our very identity now is centered on him. One writer said, Jesus, you are the center of my joy. All that's good and worthy comes from you. Yes. You're the heart of my content. Lord, I know Jesus that you are the hope for all I do. You are the center of my joy. And we realize we are nothing without him. But we also know that we can do all things through him. Oh, yeah. When we are weak, Christ is mighty. Oh, yeah. When we feel we can't go on, Christ, he's right there. And not only you can you can call on him anytime when folk not answering the phone, you can call on him in the midnight hour. He'll work it out. You can call on him in the noonday. He'll work it out. You can call on him even when you're riding in your car. I promise you, church, that he'll work it out. If you let him look around and say, Jesus. We'll work it out. Yes, he will. Yeah. When you say, preacher, just move yourself out of the way. Oftentimes we'll say, let go and let go. But are you willing, willing to let go? Because there is no God Jr. Let him work it out. <laughs> Jesus will make a way even when there seems like there is no way. He'll make a way, church. Now, I've stopped by to tell you this morning again, there is no other gospel except Christ. Paul said, go out to come to you with the excellency of speech. But I'm not coming that way. He said, I come to you with nothing except Christ be preached and him crucified. Yes. Christ be preached and him crucified. When we really realize the significance of that, that he died for us, even while we were yet sinners. Did I deserve it? No. And I'm so grateful that Jesus Christ, he didn't deal with us according to justice, but he dealt with us according to mercy. Yes. Uh -huh. So aren't you glad this morning that yes, Jesus, yes. Oh, yeah. you realize that he is everything you need. And when you look back, don't ever forget that we took him one day from judgment hall to judgment hall. They took him from Pilate to Herod, from Herod back to Pilate. They hung him out! Church, I'm stopped by to tell you that they stretched him wide. Oh, yeah. But glory, he hung from the sixth to the ninth hour. Oh, yeah. Saved 
Yeah, all day Friday. All day Saturday. But how do I know that? Early. Early Sunday morning. He got up. Reverend Cummins, how do you know that he got up? Because I stopped by to tell you, and I'll tell you over and over, because one Thursday night he got up and moved. Yeah. That's how I know he got up. And my life has not been the same. And guess what, church? All he requires out of me is that I say, Thank you! Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you didn't give up on me. Thank you that you still look down and look beyond my thoughts and saw my need. Thank you! That you're still making a way out of nowhere. And all he requires is that I say thank you. Just like they say in the Bible, they, they were telling a story about the lepers, and as they all walked away, one of them turned around and he remembered to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. When we say thank you, what we're simply saying, church, before I take my seat, when we say thank you, why God honors that? When we say thank you, we're saying, I know that nobody did this but God. Oh, yeah. So thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Amen. Go to the church, you open. Yeah. There may be one that's still outside the ark of his safe. Yeah. Go to the church, you open. There may be one that still does not yet know Jesus okay. in the part of their sins. There may be one where you come that may not realize that he is the way, yeah. he is the truth. And he ultimately is the light. No man can go to the Father but by him. Is there one today? Is there one that still does not know the one that can save anybody? Will you come right now, church? Is there one that still doesn't know our Lord and Savior? Will you come? He is ours to offer and yours to be God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen.